So let's talk about building that culture. Because, you know, they've always talked about heat culture. And it's a real thing. It's like the term Villanova guys. Like, it's a real thing. When I think of Minnesota and how you get those players to play in that length of a season and yet are that committed defensively, it looks collegiate. If it was that easy to get guys to do it, everybody would do it. Tell me the buy-in. Where did the buy-in start as a coach? Yeah, I mean, the buy-in started really in the offseason and in the preseason when we realized, like, this is who we have to be if we want to be any good. I mean, we have we have Rudy, of course, Defensive Player of the Year, um, but we also have Jaden McDaniels, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Anthony Edward. These guys are outstanding defenders in their own right, and if we're not maximizing, like, those parts of their skill sets, like, we're not obviously playing to our strengths. Uh, and then, you know, Mike Connolly's got great experience, super competitive, been in the league a long time, um, and then, you know, developing the defensive uh, kind of skills within Cat and Nas Reed, guys who've like moved from the five position to the four position. So getting more comfortable with playing in rotations and playing in different schemes and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's been, it's been a work in progress, but it, the want to is there, you know, these guys care, they got a high care factor. It shows their competitiveness. Um, and they understand that it's, it's driven our success. Like we had success right out of the gate today, uh, this season, we started, I think 17 and four, most of it driven by our defense. So it's one of the things that continues to feed itself. You know, Ant is, um, there's a playfulness and a joyfulness to his game that I think matters. I think sometimes, uh, you know, some NFL, NBA guys, like what I love about Patrick Mahomes is he's having a hell of a time out there and he likes you to be part of it, but he's demanding. When I watch Ant, Ant's, I mean, there's a little YMCA trash talk to him but he wants you to play hard. And I know that sounds kind of ethereal and weird, but when I watch Ant, even though he has the ball in his hands a lot, I would want to play hard for him because he plays so hard on the defensive end. There is something about Ant that is contagious, and I don't know how to explain it, but that's what I see when I watch him. Can you explain that? Yeah, I, well, you, you've nailed it, Colin. I mean, it's not just him as a player. It's him as a person. Like, People, when I first got here, they asked me, can he be a good leader? And I said, absolutely, because he has this personality where people want to follow him. Every leader has one thing in common, and that is people follow him. It doesn't matter how they get it to happen. And so that's his personality off the floor as well as on the floor. I mean, and as far as, as, far as having fun, whether it's Mahomes or Anthony, I mean, when you're the best player on the floor, you're generally having fun. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I remember, I remember the days when I was the best player on the floor, and basketball was a lot of fun to play. Uh, but he, but he has a joyfulness that he does play, and he's competitive, um, and he he's demanding of his teammates that they bring the same love of the game and energy, um, you know, and also execution. And th th those parts he's still learning and, and starting to just now kind of master some of that himself. Uh, and I think that's also the thing that his teammates love about him is that he'll admit what he doesn't know. He'll admit when he's wrong um, and he's not looking to blame or point fingers anywhere else, but take responsibility. You know, you obviously the players love you. So you're a pro player um, and you have to be, I think in pro sports. Um, yeah. But I thought, and I, Adam Silver has been more pro player than David Stern. I don't like a, a, a reasonably small fine for Jamal Murray. I thought it was a very reckless act especially under the basket with all the bigs. I think, hey, I'd probably say, I, I'm going to go into that in-season tournament thing and dock you a week or something. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not asking you to be the commissioner, but I, I thought that that bothered me, and I like Jamal Murray. Have you talked to, it, to your team? Maybe, maybe it's a compliment, Chris, to you, that you've got them so flustered and ticked off that they're losing themselves. But now in retrospect, how do you look at that moment? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I made my opinion pretty clear the other day. I think it's um, it's it's inexcusable. It's certainly dangerous. You know, um, I don't know if I've really seen it before. I've seen some people slam water bottles down and it's spilled out, but I've never seen kind of an, a direct uh, attempt to throw something on the floor or near or at somebody, particularly in live play. Um, I didn't expect the suspension, to be honest, Colin. I, I And I'm fine with that. I don't think that um, the league wanted to, to be able to, you know, to have to decide anything based on players 
not playing. And I'm fine with that. Uh, the monetary piece, you know, it, it is what it is. I think, uh, you know, Rudy had carried a big fine for us earlier this season with doing something uh, highly inappropriate. So, um, yeah, I didn't think too much of it. I'm moving on. We we'll expect Jamal to play, and we expect him to play um, extremely well. You know, uh, I was with Jamal when he was a rookie in Denver. You know, love him as a guy. He's super competitive, as you can see. It's one of the things I love most about him. He's clutch. He's he's he cares. You know, it, it's as strange as it sounds. It all comes from the right place. You yeah, know, yeah. Um, I didn't see it as petulant. I saw it as this is a competitive guy who trying to do everything he can to, to get himself going. Interesting. You used to be able to hand check, lean on bigs. So it was actually easier to play defense in the old days. More was allowed. Uh, it's almost like the NFL. It was much easier to play defense 10 years ago. Then they took all the clutching, grabbing, hitting over the middle. It's harder to play great defense. You have to exert incredible energy because you can't direct people. So I'm watching your defense the other night, and I'm thinking – in a weird way, and I appreciated Adam Silver doing this, Chris, the NFL's always been able to, in season, they'll kind of adapt to things if they see things happening with the rules. Adam Silver, I think, correctly said, guys, scoring's getting too easy. Let's, let's, let's let these guys play. I think the product's better. In a weird way, that benefited you and the Knicks greatly because you both have the personnel to play defense. Do you think it's possible that that little tweak – didn't benefit the Lakers and the war. It benefited your roster. Yeah, I think, I mean, we're definitely, uh, we've always been defensive first all season long. Um, and really kind of what, what the way I see it, Colin, is like the last, I don't know, 25, 30 games of the season felt a lot like playoff basketball to me. Yeah. Um, so it was good. It was good for that. Um, and, you know, it was good for preparing those teams going into the playoffs with that type of physicality. These players are so skilled and they're so smart. It it was frustrating to watch. I think as a product to watch players game the game over the last five, six years, you know, they were, they knew what fouls they could easily bait. They were going to get them every single time defensive had there's, there's some fouls where you, you couldn't do anything about it. If the guy just launches himself sideways into you, um, you know, they're trying to, and it, I think that's where it started. And to me, it makes a heck of a lot of sense. Just get out of the game. The things that aren't fouls, like we shouldn't be able to trick, the officials into calling these things because we've we, we've put ourselves in a in a corner with the rule book and that's kind of what happened uh the league has been asking questions over the last few years how do we bring defense back into the league and I'm, you know the, my my standard answer is just let us play it you know just let let teams to go back and play it a little bit more um and and allow some more physicality in and around the ball in particular well, I would never rupture a patellar tendon because I'm not an athlete and I stay away from physical contact. You as a baller, as an alpha, is out. you're out there like a player. The players probably appreciate Chris Finch's hot. You're like Luca. You're playing a bit hurt. And uh, how did the players react to your injury? How's that played in the room? Well, I mean, it's you know, a ton of support and, and, and concern. It's been great. And thank God it's my knee and not Mike Conley's that <laughs> they got hurt. That's that was the biggest thing. Um, and I, like you, Colin, have avoided playing pickup basketball for the better part of 30 years to avoid such a silly injury. <laughs> so I, I happened to get it while standing, uh, you know, on the sidelines and I, I couldn't get out of the way. So my athleticism failed me too. Yeah. Stuff. When you get older, Chris stuff breaks. Yeah, it is. It's just, <laughs> just, it's just the way it works. Hey, get healthy. Good luck. You got a game on your hands Friday. The Nuggets are going to play uh, hair on fire. So that's going to be crazy. No and uh, congrats on all your success. It's been a blast to watch. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks, Colin. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind the scenes videos and more wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.